Hey y'all, it's the Arm Dude here. Hey, this video is for all you arm users out there that need to perform services on your uh, customer's equipment or even on your own fleet equipment. I want to show you how to take advantage of the arm contract entry screens to go out and create a work order or service ticket so that you can relieve the parts used from inventory and in the case of a customer repair be able to invoice them for the parts and labor used and in the case of a fleet repair be able to capture all of the expenses associated with that repair both parts and labor so stay with me let's go out to the contract entry screens and create a service ticket or work order okay before we go out and create a work order or a service ticket let's talk a little bit about contract number prefixes these can be used in your contract entry screens to segregate your rental orders from your sales orders and service or work orders. Now in this case, I've created a prefix during the setup process called W, which represents that it's a work order or a service ticket. And below are the default values that I've set. The main thing to draw attention here is that this is a sale activity and it's just a standard order. Let's jump over into the contract entry screens and see how this prefix comes into play and let's create a service ticket for one of our customers. First thing, if I was creating a new rental contract, I would just click on the next contract number icon. In this case, since this is going to be a work order, I'm going to type in the W. That's that prefix that I showed you just a minute ago. And now we're going to hit the next contract number and that finishes populating out my contract numbering field using the numbering scheme setup uh, during the setup process. And you'll see that it's established my defaults, it's a sale, and it's a standard order. Now in this case, I would go in and tell it the customer that I was doing the repair for, or in this example, I'm going to do a repair on one of our own pieces of equipment. This is a part of our fleet. So I have an account out here called House Repairs, and this is a house account that I've set up a 100% discount so that I'm not creating any receivables. But I am going to want to capture the cost associated with the repair so that that will be available to me in my equipment usage and maintenance screens. Now what I need to do is tell it the piece of equipment that I'm going to work on. And since we have our fleet set up in equipment usage maintenance, I'm going to go out and say we're going to work on this Bobcat skid steer loader number 1030. Okay, so now I've represented the piece of equipment that I'm working on. Now what I need to do is come over here to the lines tab and this is where I'm going to capture all of my parts and labor. First off, let's say we needed to use a part and for demo examples I'm just going to grab a piece of inventory here and say I needed uh, three of these cross braces. And you'll notice that when I finish completing that line, it popped me down here to this portion of the screen and I have a highlighted section by cost code. And this is where I'm going to categorize what type of expense this is. Again, we're going to capture that in our equipment usage screens. In this case, that is parts. Next one I'm going to do is put in my number of hours of repair. And in this case, I have a charge code called Fleet Repair so that I can report on that later and see how many hours I'm spending working on internal equipment. And I'm going to tab over and say I need two hours of that, of those charges. And again, it pops me down here. I need to categorize the cost code. And I'll say this is labor. Now, I could go ahead and put a comment here and describe the repair. Okay. Now I'd repeat this for every entry that I had. If I had multiple parts or multiple labor entries, I would go ahead and continue that process, each time being required to categorize the type of expense that I'm capturing. Now when I'm completed with this, if I click over to the totals tab, what we'll see here is the total for this contract is zero. Again, I'm not trying to create receivables, but I am going to capture that expense associated with the repair. Now, I'm going to go ahead and ship this contract out and invoice it through the process and then bring you back into the equipment usage screen so that you can see how this gets updated over there. Alright, so I've gone in and completed the work order. 
I've invoiced it out and I've done all of my postings. Let's see in the equipment usage maintenance screens how that information is provided back to me. What you're looking at right now is the equipment usage maintenance screen. I'm looking at the specific unit that we perform this repair on. And down in this section of the screen, you'll notice that I have labor, parts, and the acquisition cost. Now, if I wanted to get detail on these summary totals here, if I double click, what we'll see is that that $286 that we've invested in labor in this, on this particular piece of equipment is really spread out across a number of different work orders. The last work order being dated today, 1586, that was the one that we just completed and invoiced out. So it references the repair labor that was involved there. And if I click on parts, what we'll see is that also shows 1586. Here's the part used and the total value of the parts that we were using or the total cost of the parts that we were using. So that's how you go in and create a work ticket.